Hey guys, hey guys, guys, guess what? It's my birthday. And I originally planned to celebrate by making a completely left field video about the time I entered a Pokemon Draft League, but then I got sick and I realized that would take way too much time, so that's not happening. Like most inventive coaster content creators, I end my years with a look of my top roller coaster list, ranking up what I consider to be the best attractions I've personally experienced. I wanted to start off this list by talking about my 25 new credits. Not my 25 best new credits, all 25 of my new credits. It wasn't my best year, I had a nose surgery in the middle of the summer, okay? And some of these credits were eh, some of these credits have landed comfortably in my upper echelon, so let's get into it, shall we? Here are my 25 new coaster credits ranked. A lot of the credits that fell lower on this list are uh, not amazing rides. There was nothing I rode this year that I found actively repulsive, but there are plenty of coasters that were nothing to write home about, so I don't want to waste too much time on those rides. Let's knock them out in rapid succession. New credit speedrun. Let's go. Coaster idée. I mean, it wasn't that bad, just boring. Gold Rusher. The setting is awesome, but eh, there are more exciting arrow mine trains out there. Rasseur. Charming with fun interactions, better than the King's Island version, even though it has virtually no airtime. Pony Express. This thing kicks way more ass than a family coaster should, even if it's short and the restraints kind of suck. Nickelodeon Slim Streak. Feels like a mini Steel Force, and I mean that as a compliment. The first drop is absolutely wicked, but the forces do kind of disappear after that. The New Revolution. I know this ride came first, but this just feels like the Super Duper Looper, but more in every way. Very long. Scream. Feels like Medusa in the parking lot. Exterminator. It's a Revachon spinner, and it didn't spin as much as the others I've been on, but the theming is charming, and it does accentuate the sense of disorientation. Jack Rabbit. Fine, 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 the double down lives up to the hype. It's insane, and it definitely makes up for the pedestrian rest of the ride. Sierra Cido Inder. An absolutely chaotic family spinner. Family spinner that I would welcome at one of my home parks in a heartbeat, even if the spinning and its pretty crazy pacing are really the only draws here. Apocalypse. Great layout with an awesome first drop sequence, but it was brutally rough, and I have a pretty high tolerance for that sort of thing. Hopefully the retrack will solve that. TMNT chez le I was really underwhelmed by this one, TBH. The launch is decent kick, and the inversions bring good hang time, but the restraints kind of suck. That pothole after the main drop is horrific. And the side-to-side -side shake you feel while waiting for the world's steepest drop is somehow more exciting than the drop itself. Thunderbolt. Sleeper hit of the year, I wanted to like Thunderbolt going in, and I'm glad to say after experiencing its wild combination of laterals and airtime, served with an absolute boatload of charm and a sick terrain layout, I love it. Kaba. Unfortunately, I only got one ride early in the day in like row six, so the whole ride felt a lot less forceful and whippy than I was led to believe. But it's the most damn charming B&M I've been on by a wide margin. It just has a je ne sais quoi about it that you usually only find on old arrows and woodies. Skyrocket. Another big sleeper, the first two thirds of this ride, especially that top hat, are insanely forceful and every inversion tries to throw you out of the train. I'm sure the ending sucks, but it's like funny bad, so I can excuse it. And now we've come to the top 10, my 10 favorite credits from the new year. But before we get to that, Bad news. It seems that Alan Schilke, founding member of the recently revived DIN Corporation, has publicly threatened his successor, Joe Draves, for not putting enough small airtime hills in the finale of Airy Force One. Please like and subscribe to the channel to gain exclusive access to the Joe Draves fan zone, to show your support and allow Mr. Draves to weather the torment and continue making coasters exactly like his predecessor would. Thank you. Anyways, on to the top 10. Number 10. Batman the Reed. Okay, I didn't get a lot of new credits this year. That said, Bat clones are criminally slept on. They're insanely whippy and hella forceful, especially when they're running fast. And this one wasn't. My only ride was on a somewhat chilly California morning, but I've been on Bat clones enough to know this is not a good representation of the ride. I slightly prefer the theme on this Batman to my home park one. Yeah, they're short. Yeah, they're everywhere. But anytime I'm at a Six Flags park, I'm not passing up a lap on Batman the ride. Number 9. Shikra. I feel like most people list Shikra high on their list of US dives, and I generally agree with that sentiment, but I do think Griffin takes the edge on Shikra just slightly. The positives in these early dives are super underrated, and the two big drops offer stellar floater as you would expect. 
I love the theming and the splashdown is a very welcome feature in the heat of fucking Florida. That said, it is way too tame and floaty to land further up my list. Number eight, en time. On paper, it looks like Shellraiser should be the better ride, but in my opinion, hang time absolutely stomps it in practically every department. The trains are more comfortable and offer just the tiniest hint of wit with four rows. The positives and the inversions are great, even if it has precious little, you know, hang time. And the first drop is way better than hang time's steeper cousin in Zach Wilson's box. By not having to focus on making the drops so comically steep, Gerslauer could actually make the drops sustained, instead of ending like two-thirds of the way up the spike. It's a little bit buttoned down, but I was pleasantly surprised, and outside of a few small sections, it was pretty smooth throughout. Number 7. Silver Bullet. Okay, okay, let's get all the first drop jokes out of the way. All right, good, I'm glad it's out of your system. Yes, the first drop is really fucking shallow, but like the ending of Skyrocket, it's so weird it's funny, and the positives really start to pile on towards the end. Once that drop is over too, you are treated to one of the best inverts around. Like, damn, I slept on this thing. It's not as whippy as the older inverts, but the pacing is furious, snaking through the paths of Knott's Berry Farm with insanely tight clearances. The positives are fantastic, that ending helix really brings the sauce every time, and there are even surprising pops of airtime. That overbank in the back car, it's awesome. Highly recommend. Number 6. Wonder Woman Flight of Courage. I came in expecting a slightly better Jersey Devil, and that's what I got. Unfortunately, I only got morning rides, so I imagine it gets even better at night, like my home park version, but I had enough early JD rides to make an informed one-to-one -one comparison. Wonder Woman's a bit more whippy and the ride runs a little bit faster. Like JD though, it also randomly has some absolutely brutal potholes in that return run, which is just baffling for a brand new coaster. These single rails fall on the lower end of my RMC rankings, but they still bring great airtime, good pacing, and fun elements wrapped up in a neat little package. The new elements do basically nothing. And now we move to the top five, the heavy hitters. I won't bury the lead here, each of these rides land comfortably in my top 25. How far do they land up there, though? Sorry, but I'm gonna have to dangle that carrot in front of you for a little bit longer. Else, like, I wouldn't have much to talk about in the next video when these come up, right? Still, we'll talk about them each a little bit right here. Number 5. Ghost Ride. Now, if you follow me for a while, you can probably gather that I'm not a huge wooden coaster person. That doesn't mean I hate Woody's, far from it. There's only one single wooden coaster in my top 10, and I don't really expect that to change anytime soon. And that said, Ghost Rider makes a damn good taste for itself, and it has taken the mantle as my favorite wooden coaster not made by Intamin or called The Bull in Espanol. I won't spoil all the juicy details now, but Ghost Rider is a masterclass in pacing, with solid airtime, wicked laterals, an unhinged attitude, and a very complete ride experience. I'll go over it more in depth, don't worry. Number 4. Montu. Yes! Yes! Finally, I got to ride Montu! I've been obsessing over this thing since my childhood days, and I'm glad to say it lived up to the hype. Montu is something special. Now, I've already waxed poetic about this beast for a very long time at the end of my invert tier list, so check that out if you want to hear more details. But this thing is savage, super whippy, and the Batwing is absolutely erotic. If the only roller coaster I could experience for the rest of my life solely consisted of Montu's Batwing, I would probably still die happy. Number 3. Wilka's Revenge. Yep, it's a solid RMC, up near the top of my credits count. Crazy, right? I got many, many rides on West Coast Racers this year all over the train, so my thoughts have changed from my original evaluation in some ways. I am starting to tire a little bit of the repetitive nature of RMC experiences, and that said I absolutely despise the original Wildcat, so I consider this new attraction a massive upgrade. Skyrush is still better though. Number 2. Phantom S Revenge. Guess who's still the best steel track conversion of an old roller coaster from the 1990s in the state of Pennsylvania named Blank's Revenge? That's right, it's Phantom, baby. If you want to hear more of my thoughts of this awesome machine, I did just spend hours and hours making a 33 minute long tribute to the ride. So go watch that. Please. For me. It's my birthday. And landing in at number one is Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. Yeah, yeah, boring, what a cliché, of course Iron Gwazi comes out at top. But where does it land in my actual top 25, and what do I think of it? Well, you're just gonna have to wait to find out.
So thank you so much for watching. This is a little teaser of my upcoming year-end coaster ranking list. I didn't want to spoil too much about some of my higher placing rides, as they will figure prominently in the eventual Top 25 video coming out in December. And I have been sick for a while as well, and the Phantom video ate up a lot more time than I expected, so it thought it was time to do something a little more light. And stay tuned for my Top 25 video, which will feature a few of these new credits as well as some returning heroes. And if you want to refresh yourself on my previous ride rankings from last year, take a look at my best coaster videos from last year here. Happy Thanksgiving, and thank you for watching.